We are live. We are live. Welcome to College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, please subscribe to our channel. Smash that like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and your friends. If you want to support this outpost rebel outpost college football youtube channel with a donation just hit that dollar sign where you make a comment and i'll get to you super chat as quick as i possibly can welcome into the studio that sits on the corner the very corner of keith jackson parkway and kurt Gowdy avenue do not be afraid do not be afraid to be a legend in the chat room or with your phone calls later in the show. It's Monday, April 1st. And no, this is not an April 1st uh, Fool's Joke show. This is going to be serious, just like pretty much all my shows. But um, the title of the show is ACC Has a Weakness in Its Armor. It's nothing new. It's nothing sexy. But there is a weakness, and Florida State is fighting for home field advantage. We're going to go over an article that was done, released today, April 1st, outside of the sports world, in the business world. And they're going to be talking about the court case. We're going to be going over it Um Pretty interesting stuff. Um, 
There is. They, they, they consider ACC. They do have a weakness. They talk about Florida State. Case has weaknesses, but they do believe there's a weakness in the ACC's armor. We've talked about it before, but it's coming from an outside source, one that doesn't really have a, you know, they don't have skin in the game, so to speak. Very interesting, very interesting article. We're going to be going through it here in our monologue of our live show. So put down your comments in the chat room. Let me know what you think about the article once we go through it. Beginning of the show, we're going to be doing a spotlight. We have a spotlight team today. Almost every live show, what we've been doing over the last six weeks, we do a spotlight on a certain team for the 2024 season. We're going scattershot. We're not just taking one conference and doing all the teams, taking another conference. We've done G5. We're, we're going to continue to skip around the country today. We're doing the Miami Hurricanes. The Miami Hurricanes, man, very interesting. I'm getting more interested in this team as we're going through spring football. I watched an interview from their center who transferred from Indiana, Zach Carpenter, an experienced offensive line. I'm kind of... Um, I'm kind of buying what he and others are selling. Last year, I was down on Miami. The year before, I was down on Miami. This year, they've got a couple big question marks. One of the question marks is this. Is this. What does that mean? What does that mean? From thumb to pinky, what does that mean? That might be the biggest question mark for the Miami Hurricanes. I'll explain that in a little bit here. Uh, we're going to start the show with the spotlight on the Miami Hurricanes. Then we're going to be going through a pretty interesting article on the Florida State ACC debate, the court cases. Now, look, keep your head on a swivel. Keep your head on a swivel. We're looking for... We're looking for breaking news that says the judge Bledsoe of Mecklenburg County is ready to make a ruling and it's going to be on such and such a date. It's going to be tomorrow, whatever. We're looking for that breaking news. It's April 1st. It's going to happen before April 9th. That's the one thing we know. So keep your head on a swivel during this live show and let me know. If there's anything breaking. Okay, I want to thank everybody who's come on in at the beginning of the show. Richard L., Mr. Colorado Buffalo's in the house. GT is first. Gene Calderon says he's first. Kreitzer says he's first. GT was second. Gene Calderon was third. David Kreitzer was fourth. Vissers, his head is a swiveling. Stephen McNeely is in the house. Derek Marie, my prof, Randy Taylor, Nick Boardman, The Walking Geek, R. Webb, Stephen Vitt, Early Peak member. Suzanne is here. Keith, kind of bizarre after hearing nothing but ironclad over and over. We'll, we'll find out. We're going to find out if that grant of rights is ironclad. Um, Grant of Rights have been pretty ironclad in its history thus far uh, in the courts. Does this particular Grant of Rights, is, just, is this a little different than the others? Did, did the ACC and ESPN, ESPN make a huge mistake on the language they choose in the media agreements? We should find out. We shall find out. But um, the ACC's weakness, the kink in its armor, according to this outside review from some somebody outside the sports world, doesn't really have to do with the ground of rights, so to speak. It has to do with the process that the ACC took 
we're, we're going to go over it. Nothing really new, nothing really sexy, but when it's coming from where it's coming from, um, Florida State is fighting for a home field advantage. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. Immaculate Mr. Hawkeye is in the house. Mr. Terrapin, J.D. Turtle, Bill G., Bill G is here. Um, holy smokes. T5 Terps is in the house. No drum roll. No drum roll. Nope. Not today. Rock and rant. Mr. Miami Hurricane. Gifted five memberships. Holy smokes. Thank you so much for your incredible continuous generosity to this channel. Rock and rant. Thank you for those five gifted memberships. You are hereby cloak and dagger knighted once again gene calderon kirk bender wet blanket preston from greensboro in richard ledford you are all hereby cloak and dagger knighted yourselves congratulations please say thank you to rock and rant mr hurricane for his uh, incredible generosity all of you who just received the gifted membership, you can now go into our YouTube channel. Go watch the membership only uh, Cloak and Dagger episodes. We dropped one today. I'm going to talk a little bit about it as we go on in the second part of our monologue. Um, a lot of people say, Greg, you're being a little, now you're being a little too tough. You're being a little too tough on Florida State. You're being a little too tough on the chances to escape the ground of rights. Let me make it perfectly clear. I believe that Florida State is in a better position now than I thought they were going to be in on December 22nd, 2023. I think they have a better case now than I ever thought they were going to have on December 26th, 2023. However, and I make it pretty clear, the people who are talking to me, and maybe they are all, maybe they are all wrong. I doubt it, but maybe they are. But what they're saying to me is, there is no, this is a grind. There is no easy way on this. Either Florida State's going to win this in the courts or they're going to get a settlement because they're doing so well in the court against the ACC. There is no ma magic wand. There is no magic wand. There is no shortcut. This is a grind. This is a grind. And I think Florida State's doing pretty good. We're going to find out s some more this week in the Mecklenburg County Court. So anyways, uh, I talked about that in my um, early P. Cloak and Dagger episode. You can go to it. Um, after this live show. Just watch YouTube guys say ESPN has declined the option. I trust you YouTube guys. You um I talk about this in in my early Pete Cloak and Dagger. And ESPN may decline the option to carry ACC's content. From 2027 and beyond. They may do that. But. They are, they are a publicly traded company. Under the Disney umbrella. If they have made this decision. And it's an official, official decision. They're going to announce it. And they're going to. And if Florida State knows this. If this is actually the case. Florida State would be singing this from the highest tree branch. Florida State would be talking about this. Um, now, look, people who are saying this, I don't know where they're getting it. They're probably talking to really good people, really smart people. They probably trust those people. And maybe those people are correct. But as I said in my early Pete Cloak and Dagger episode this morning, uh, not anybody I've talked to believes this to be true. 
So if it is true, I'll take the L, but I don't think I'm going to be taking the L on this. I don't know where, there's a lot of things being said right now. Um, we might be on the cusp of getting some good news. I shouldn't say we, I should say Florida State, but I don't think it's any of this. We shall see. Kyle Visser is in the house. Nick Boardman. Um, again, this is coming at me in waves. Which is fine. But again, if, if ESPN has already done this, I can name you about at least two former employees of Sports Business Journal that would have reported this. Florida State would be talking about it. I don't... Um, they may decline the option. And maybe this uh, gentleman from Double Fries and Oslaw and others, maybe, maybe they got the info. But I got, I'm going to tell you something. I, I did some poking and prodding on it. It was part of my early P. Cloak and Dagger episode. Become a member. You can watch the whole thing. I asked some people in the uh, industry, so to speak, and they're like, when, when that, if, if that happens, you're going to know about it. And for this to pop Right before, right, you saw what ESPN did in the court case and um, what they filed, right? Basically almost accusing the Florida State lawyers of a felony, opening up their trade. I, ESPN is not, boy, right before the Mecklenburg County ruling on venue and motion to seal, they think they're going to, maybe ESPN has had meetings on it. I just don't believe it's the case, guys. I really don't. I really don't. I'm not saying the people who have this information are not serious. They probably are. But we're not getting any of this information. And it's not due to the lack of effort because I did poking and prodding on that issue and two other issues. And there was nothing there. Far as I'm concerned, there is nothing there. Uh, Ryan Thomas, the Flug Empire reigns. I don't know about that. Ryan Brooks, we are live. Stephen McNeely, Clinton Moses is here. Matt Neeson, um, Cornelius Green, praise the Lord, Greg. Play, praise the Lord, absolutely indeed. Expedition, Greg. One re week from tomorrow is a huge hearing in Leon County. There is no April Fools at Peak Around the Corner. We don't do that. Um, Lee's in the house. Um, We got a super chat. Carrie Gold knows. It's all just April Fools. Thank you, uh, Carrie Gold knows. I thank you. Appreciate your your uh, continued generosity to this channel. Thank you very much. I just want to make it clear. Anything I say, anything I say today is not April Fools. Okay, it just isn't. Um, so rock and rant and Carrie Gold knows. Thank you for your generosity here early in the show. Thank you so much. Greg, even the most pessimistic pessimistic insiders I know about Cam Ward because all the drama he said he's made them a believer to the degree to the degree you can in spring. I'm gonna be hitting that right now, Rock and Rant. I'm gonna be hitting that right now. Our spotlight team today is the Miami Hurricanes. Ryan Willie, the evil badger. There's no way Florida State can go Indian five months. I won't be honest much. It's 
baseball season. Well, thank you, Ryan. I hope you can catch us when you can. You're an incredible, valuable PATC member. Absolutely, thank you. You're incredibly generous and kind to me, even though I call you the evil badger. So whenever you can get a chance to watch us instead of the Milwaukee Brewers, because I know you're not watching the Wisconsin Badgers because they don't have a baseball team, but anytime you're not watching the Brewers, turn on PATC. Thank you, Ryan Willie, for your super chat, for your kindness. I appreciate it. Nitwit is in the house. Ryan Martin is in the house. Okay. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's uh, let's get into this. Let's get into this. First of all, we're going to be doing a spotlight on the Miami Hurricanes. Okay. Now I begin the show. We're going to do the Miami Hurricanes 2024. We're just going to talk about them, put a spotlight on them. We're going to be talking more Miami, more ACC in the early summer. Remember, the, the, the portal opens again on April 16th. I've had people ask me, who's going to be your, who's going to be your G5 team that makes the, the playoffs? I... I did my way, way too, way too early crazy predictions in late January. But now we're getting more serious here. And I'm not going to make a prediction. I don't, let's wait till the portal chaos happens. We'll see how the dust settles. And then in the early summer, I'm going to be making my way too early, I mean, my too early predictions. And then in about August, I'm going to be hammering down on my predictions who's going to win the conference championship and everything. Last year, I did really good on the conference champions. I screwed up on the Big Ten, but I had Washington. I had Florida State. I had a lot of, we did okay. But, um, but Miami, Florida, Miami Hurricanes. I started, I started out the monologue by saying, this has a lot to do with how Miami plays this year. What does that mean? What does that mean? What could that possibly mean? Well, the fat guy from Minnesota has a hand size of nine inches. From thumb to the tip of the pinky, nine inches. That's how you measure hand size. You know when you go into when these uh, quarterbacks get their measurements, when they're measured size and everything, and and uh, and for the NFL draft, the only thing I pay attention to, the only measurables I pay attention to when it comes to quarterback, I do pay attention to the size. I do pay attention to that, but even how tall a quarterback is. But the one measurable that I really pay attention to is hand size. You go look at the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Look at their hand size. Look at the ones who struggled. Look at their hand size. Drew Brees was pretty short, right? Was he six feet tall? Drew Brees had gigantic hands. Brett Favre had gigantic hands. Who had small hands? I could name off a bunch of quarterbacks, struggling quarterbacks in the NFL, not too big of hands. Teddy Bridgewater, I think he was a little bit smaller than nine inches. Well, Cam Ward, now remember, Cam Ward, look, really talented guy. He's proved it. He, he, he's really talented. He likes to stay in the pocket. He's got an arm, even with this hand size of eight and a half inches. It has been reported it's eight and a half inches. It's been reported it's smaller than nine inches. I say, great. Who cares? Who cares? Well, there is a reason why Cam Ward has turned over the ball so much, getting hit fumble after fumble after fumble. I... That is my, that is, 
That is my worry about Cam Ward. He can look great throwing the ball versus air. He looks great doing the route tree practice. Boom, 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 boom. He looks great running the ball, but when he's in the pocket and when he gets hit a little bit, that ball tends to slip out. I'm just saying. So that is one particular thing I'm worried about Miami. But Cam Ward, if he can, if he can, if he can limit his turnovers, just like every quarterback, obviously, Miami could have a very special season. Could have a very special season. Now, they're running back by committee that they do every year has to be over with. Give the ball to Henry Parrish. Give him the rock. Rock and rant. Give Henry Parrish the rock. He's had a very good college football career. He's, going, he's gained over 2,000 yards. Last year was his best year. Averaging 6.3 yards per rush. Give him the rock. Give him the rock. RB2 Fletcher, He's I, he's got some surgery. I don't even know what it was. He's not in spring practice. This has got to be Mr. Parrish's time. Give him the rock. As I said earlier, they do have a, an experienced offensive line. They lost two guys, the Hurricanes in the NFL draft. That's coming up. But they did get a key, I think a key transfer. Uh, Zach Carpenter, who I watched play at Indiana. I don't know, three years as a starter, maybe even four. Gets an extra year for whatever reason. I think he only has one year of eligibility. He's been around for a long time. I saw an interview with Zach Carpenter a few weeks, uh, a week, a couple days, a week ago. I'm not sure when, but uh, I, do, I do remember the interview. And uh, he's all pumped up. They love him already there in Miami. Having great spring football. So the offensive line is good. Give it to Henry Parrish. Keep Cam Ward's um, turnovers down. And, of course, the wide receiver room. Now, two years ago, I kind of ripped the Miami receiver room. Restrepo, of course, is magnificent. Xavier Restrepo. He is absolutely magnificent. Restrepo caught 85 passes last year, over 1,000 yards. He was the key. He was the go-to guy for whoever was playing the quarterback position. Tyler Van Dyke has gone on to Wisconsin. Uh, Colby Jones has transferred. I talked about him. I talked about him in an episode this morning. Uh, he's, he's doing incredible in the spring practice with the Georgia Bulldogs. He was the type of guy who dropped that key pass for Miami, though. That key third down pass for a first down, Kobe would drop it. So, are they going to miss him? Um, I don't know. They're 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 talking big about um, about Houston. A little uh, he hasn't played much. Isaiah Houston, Isaiah Horton. He's supposedly going to fill the position. Now they got Jacoby George. Jacoby George, Xavier Respiro. Jacoby George had over 50 catches last year. So they're, they're, they're good in the wide receiver. They're good in the wide receiver room. They have it two years ago. They weren't. Last year, they counted a lot on Xavier. But hopefully, uh, hopefully Cam Ward. Now that tight end, a war, Elijah, Elijah Ar Araro. I can't say his last name. The tight end, every single year, uh, Miami expects something out of him. He's only caught 11 passes in his career. He was injured last year. They think he's going to be a big spark at the tight end position. We'll see. We shall see about that. So the offense, um, the offense for Miami, it's, it could be special. An experienced offensive line, a quarterback who's had great success, except for those turnovers, give the ball to Henry Parrish. You got a good duo wide receiver, wide receiver one, wide receiver two, a tight end that might pop. 
Mayor Cristobal, look, you, it looks like Miami has the offense that may be able to get them to contend for the ACC championship. On defense, I think there is a weakness that everybody's worried about in Miami. And Rock and Rant and other uh, Florida Canes, uh, maybe you can relieve some of the worry that I have about one particular unit. We're going to get to that in a second. Ruben Bain, the true freshman, defense to end seven and a half sacks last year. Seven and a half sacks for Ruben Bain. Consensus all freshman team. Holy smokes. So you got him. That's what you need. You need a uh, defensive end, rush end that can cause all that havoc. They've got that. They've also got a, a kid coming who's uh, look who's showing out a transfer from Marshall. Defensive tackle, they've got a, a Minnesota, a Minnesota, middle Tennessee State defensive tackle who's been doing incredible things in the weight room. Now remember, Miami lost to Middle, Middle Tennessee State two years ago in 2022 where they got a really good defensive tackle from Middle, Middle Tennessee State. Uh, and then Kiko. Kiko, the great linebacker. One of the best linebackers in the country. So they're pretty set on the defensive line, linebackers. They got some players. But the secondary, and I don't know, unless there's some Hurricane fans, that secondary imploded last year. Imploded. Daryl Portal Jr. coming back. Um, I don't know. If somebody, if if by a phone call or in the chat, if somebody can say, look, that Miami, Florida, Miami Hurricane secondary, they're going to be able to compete this year. They've got the thoroughbreds. Then if, if I could be convinced, I might have Miami in the ACC championship game. I think there's a pathway. Cam Ward got a, he's, he can't be turning the ball over. His turnovers are going to be more costly this year than being at Washington State, than being at Incarnate were, were. Cam Ward and his eight and a half inch hands or nine inch hands, if we're going to be generous, he can't be turning the ball over. They got to keep, keep him clean in the pocket. Cam Ward likes to be in the pocket, and he also has a tendency to stay in there too long. He likes to watch the plays develop, but he's going to have to deliver the ball a little bit quicker in the ACC. We'll see what happens. But right now, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by Miami. If, if someone could say to me, Greg, Henry Parrish is going to get the ball. Uh, what, he got the ball 100 times last year? Something like that, right? He's got to get the ball. He should get the ball 20 times a game if he stays healthy. But that's just me. He should have the ball 200 times, not 100 times. Give him the ball. We'll see what happens. Anyways, that is my spotlight for the Miami Hurricanes. Let me know how wrong I got it once again. Uh, rock and rant. Um... Secondary is a concern. Spring portal is needed. Mary <laughs> God, jeez. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys are killing me. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys are killing me. Um yeah, I look. I Cam Ward, you know, I'm a I I love watching him play because it's excitement. It's excitement. There's going to be excitement in Miami this year. It, it, the expectations are elevated, and they should be. 
Cam Ward's highlights, Cam Ward's ceiling is way up there. Now, I said, when Cam Ward was thinking about going um, to Miami or to the NFL draft, I was pleading that Cam Ward would go to Miami because I don't think his draft stock is where it could be. But then, you remember when he made the announcement he was going to the NFL draft, I just said, no, on this, on this YouTube channel. I wanted him to come back. I wanted him to prove that he could protect the ball better. He doesn't have to, great skill set. He doesn't have to prove any more than that. Get rid of the ball a little bit quicker, protect the ball way better. And then he can be first round, second round pick next year. Then he decided to come back. And that was great news, I believe. I believe for Cam Ward and Miami Hurricanes. So I, I think it's great that he's with, I think it's great that he's with Miami. Kerry Gold knows Greg Parrish is gone. Henry Parrish is not gone. Parrish is gone? Or is that a joke because I praise Henry Parrish? Is that a joke? Henry Parrish is not gone. Is Henry Parrish gone? Or is uh, Kerry Golanoa's giving me a... Parrish is gone? Parrish is in the NFL draft. What happened to Henry Parrish? Terry Kane. Parrish is gone. What happened to Henry Parrish? He went back to Ole Miss. Okay, I just... Thank you for your generosity, Kane. Thank you for your generosity, Clark. When did he go in the portal? What 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 happened here? Timeout. I'm calling a timeout. When did he hit the portal? He hasn't officially transferred. So he's going to go in the portal April 16th. No, I'm not going to do redo the episode, but I will. <laughs> what? Well, I'm not going to redo the live show. So he's not in the portal. Well, okay. Well, he looks to be going back to Ole Miss. He started his career in Ole Miss. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. It's an outrage. I had no idea. I was all excited. Why is he doing that? He, this was going to be, who was going to be the running back? This was going to be the, the, look, I don't blame him because he hasn't gotten the rock like he should have gotten. Who's going to be RB1 in Miami? Fletcher? Fletcher's out with an injury. Or do I have that wrong? The spotlight on Miami, the spotlight is flickering here. We're having some problems here in the studio. Okay. Um, well, uh, Judkins went from Ole Miss to Ohio. I had no, so he's not, he's, he's going to be in the portal April 16th. Well, my goodness. Holy smokes. Well, who's, okay, Terry Kane, Rock and Rant. Who is going to be Miami's RB1 as at this, at, as at, at this point? Let me know in the chat. Holy smokes. Did this just happen? I've been all excited about I've been I've I've been excited about Henry Parrish finally being 
the cowbell for the Miami Hurricanes, and he leaves. And he didn't let me know about it. I tell you what, this this uh, <laughs> this transfer portal stuff, man. When did this happen? It happened like a week ago. Well, holy smokes! Okay, well, this two weeks ago. Okay, well, this is proof positive why we're we're not doing no prediction segment because well, Fletcher's not even healthy, or is Fletcher healthy now? Am I if I missed that story? Okay, well, anyways. If Miami can find a running back, if Mayor Cristobal would give him the ball, if Cam Ward can reduce his turnovers and all that other stuff, uh, we'll see what happens. Nathan, we're not doing April Fool's jokes. Nathan, we're not going to go there. We're, we're, uh, and my Henry Parrish was not an April Fool's joke. I was all excited about Henry Parrish. Minor injury, but he's not practicing. <laughs> Wow. Okay, here we go. Let's uh now let's talk about the ACC's weakness. This is from Bloomberg News. Senior correspondent Alex Ebert. Fletcher will be back for the season. Citizen is battling with Chris Johnson. Florida State Clemson tests antitrust and contract attack on ACC. Bloomberg News. Now, this just came out today, April 1st. A lot of this is not new. But it does come from a different perspective. With no skin in the game, I think it's real interesting. One of the largest college sports conferences, the Atlantic Coast Conference, is defending aggressive antitrust and contract theories brought by Florida State University and Clemson University. Two football powerhouses and is fighting for home field advantage in a North Carolina state court. The stakes are high for the ACC and other conferences, which could see more claims like these from disgruntled teams if the conference doesn't successfully beat them down. In these suits alone, more than half a billion dollars in television broadcast rights and contract penalties are on the line. Again, Bloomberg News, we put the link in the description box so you can read the whole thing. On March 22nd, the Atlantic Coast Conference and Florida State University faced off in the North Carolina Business Court as teams of lawyers argued whether the school's nearly $600 million fight to exit the conference should be heard in the ACC's home base of North Carolina or in Florida State Court. Both the schools and the conference are banking on shaky legal third theories. Lawyers say where the choice of venue could help tip the scales. The ACC preemptively filed a lawsuit in North Carolina to bar Florida State from leaving the conference. Florida State followed with its own litigation in Florida State Court. Those suits core issues, whether fees to exit the conference are so high that they're illegally anti-competitive or unconscionable was complicated by a pile on 140 million complaint filed on March 19th by Clemson University in South Carolina State Court echoing Florida State claims. The Clemson complaint 
was very carefully, strategically located. They're trying to pick up whatever is left if Florida blows it up, said Peter Carfanga, the director of sports law clinic at Harvard Law School. It's almost like a pincher attack. Courthouse sprint. Learning that Florida State was planning to sue the ACC fight first in North Carolina on December 21st, 2023. The Tallahassee-based university was planning to break deals it entered with the conference over the last 13 years, the suit said, endangering an organization earning 14 universities hundreds of millions of dollars annually. The next day, Florida State fired back with its complaint in Florida, arguing that draconian exit fees and rights to game broadcasts lock schools into a conference that's underperforming. Poor leadership, they claim, also led to Florida State's undefeated college football team missing out on last season's playoffs and the payouts that came with that opportunity. Those failures have coalesced with the ACC's efforts to effectively deprive ACC members of their fundamental right to withdraw from an unconscionable contract or face monetary penalties that are unparalleled in the history of college athletics, the school said in its amended complaint. Now, a lot of this stuff we know about, right? This is Bloomberg News put out today. But they're just giving you the backdrop, once again, of what both Florida State ACC and Clemson has done here. The universities claim that the ACC's long-term deals have lost their conference teams hordes of cash compared with deals struck by other conferences. The ACC is locked into broadcast deals through 2036 with payouts dwarfed by the cash received by schools in other conferences, such as the Big Ten and the SEC. The ACC contract mandates universities who leave the organization forfeit cash from game broadcasts for the next 12 years. along with the withdrawal penalty of $130 million, totaling $572 million, Florida State claims. That makes the exit fee an unlawful restraint on trade, Florida State says, arguing these deals limit market competition and violate state antitrust laws. Laws that recently the Florida Attorney General leveraged to squeeze a deal that could equate to $80 million in penalties for Spirit Airlines when the company sought a merger. Clemson hammered home that the ACC members make roughly $30 million less per year than schools in the Big Ten and the SEC with penalties far, far higher than the SEC's $45 million fee for defectors. The Big Ten does not levy a fee on schools that leave. So in other words, Clemson is saying, the penalty for ACC schools to leave the conference is $130 million, while at the same time making $30 million less per year than schools in the SEC who only has a $45 million exit fee, and the Big Ten, who doesn't have an exit fee at all. Judge against these comparators, the withdrawal penalty that the ACC insists a member institution must pay to leave the conference today has ballooned to a point that was unimaginable in 2012 and is unconscionable, unenforceable, and violation of public policy especially when sought to be imposed on a public university like Clemson, the school said.
only so long as it chooses. However, and this that what I just said is not the weakness in its armor, according to who Bloomberg News spoke to. Only so as long as it chooses. However, disadvantage, disadvantages the deals may look. The ACC argues that the schools sign on to these agreements, making them irreparable and exclusive through 2036. It cannot be that Florida State is bound by a contract only so long as it chooses. The conference said in an amendment complaint, Hal K. Litchford, a senior counsel at Baker Donaldson, an antitrust expert, said a contract isn't necessarily illegal just because the terms are harsh and prevent a party from seeking better terms on the open market. Such arguments are often the downfall of antitrust plaintiffs, he added. The allegation from the antitrust standpoint is the contract restrained Florida State ability to make the best deal it can. But we don't have a well-defined market, he said. Florida State is being restrained from participating, but so is every other ACC school and every other SEC school and Big Ten school. So that's not really a, a, a causable uh, claim. Basically, what this lawyer is saying is Florida State is constrained about trying to figure out their true marketplace. But, you know, uh, so are other schools, other ACC schools, even SEC schools, because they're under a grant or ground rights. They're under contract. So are the Big Ten schools. Additionally, the theory that the contract penalties are unconscionable is one that's generally used by consumers facing down big corporations or former employees trying to get out of penalties in non-compete agreements where damage to a business is hard to calculate. Here, Florida State and Clemson helped participate in the ACC as it was reaching these TV deals and the cash on the line is clear. The schools also run into another problem. The conferences themselves are arguably pro-competition, said antitrust expert Jordan Ludwig, a partner at Crowell and Maury LLP. There's a body of the U.S. Supreme Court precedent saying in order for a league or conference to function, they have to come together and set rules, he said. That's how you develop a league product. The AC said, AC said it wouldn't comment on Florida case beyond its statements in the court briefs, but said in a statement that it remains confident that its agreement with all its members will be affirmed by the courts. Now, we're not done with this article. I did say the title of the show is The ACC Has a Weakness in Its Armor, according to to this Bloomberg News article. So it, it, it went through the case of where they don't think that Florida State or Clemson has a very good argument when it comes to exit penalties and everything else. But it does, do they do believe the ACC has a weakness in its armor? It's nothing new. It's nothing sexy. There's nothing sexy about this. This is a grind. This is Florida State the best advantage would be to grab home field advantage. Home field advantage. Home field advantage in these cases could have a big impact on schools nationwide. Carfagna, Litchford, and Ludwig agreed that the likeliest outcome is that the litigants negotiate a settlement for the universities to buy out of the conference. Similar to deals cut by other schools shifting allegiances in recent decades. But if the parties stick it out and leave it to the courts to decide where and how the case comes down will send a message. 
So there's some there's some law firms here that talk with uh, Bloomberg News saying the likeliest outcome is that the litigant the litigants negotiate a settlement. How high, how low that money figure is, is going to be largely dependent, I believe, on who gets home field advantage. And Bloomberg News believes the same thing. If Florida State prevails here. Other schools that think they have an opportunity to make more money will use that as a precedent to leave a conference, Lugwood said. If the ACC wins, that could lead to less turmoil among the conferences as the organizations hold sway over the members. And here is the PATC money shot of the article. But the ACC has a weakness in its armor. It filed a complaint preemptively against Florida State in hopes of keeping the litigation in North Carolina, opening itself to attacks that it didn't have the legal ability to block a breach that hadn't yet occurred. Now the courts have to decide who gets to litigate in their backyard. The ACC has a weakness in its armor. It filed its complaint preemptively against Florida State. And this is what Florida State hit hard on in Mecklenburg County in front of Judge Bledsoe. They hit this hard. And Bledsoe, Judge Bledsoe, he, um, he had some tough questions to the lawyers of the ACC and they didn't really come up with good answers on this. If this is the PATC money shot number two of this article, if cases are centered in the university's hometowns, they're more likely to get a favorable ruling because the schools are what make these communities tick. Carfanga said. And then the article ends by saying the case is Atlanta, Atlanta Coast Conference versus the Board of Trustees. It gives the numbers of the cases. If the cases are centered in the university's hometowns, they're more likely to get a favorable ruling because the schools are what makes these communities tick. Going to tell you what my impression is. Um, of this article. I had somebody reach out to me and tell me, read this article. Somebody in the industry. The best case Florida State has it may not be the ground of rights. It, it, it may be an ironclad. It might be a tough nut, nut to crack. It might be very difficult for Florida State to gain uh, a, a decent settlement on that. However, the weakness in the ACC's case is how they went about all this. How they filed on December 21st, a day before Florida State. How they didn't get a vote from its members. How they didn't have legitimacy in suing Florida State. There's a lot of weakness there. And if Florida State can get the venue, if they can get the venue at Leon County, well, I think there'll be settlement in the air at that point right at a lower figure than I think many of us thought was possible so there is an ACC weakness uh, the Bloomberg News went to their law the law law firm and that is their perspective on it I again we we put out a, a cloak and dagger early peak episode this morning um, and all I can say is everybody that I talk with, and I did it again, I went out there and I poked and prod, and all these theories that are being put out there. And they're great to talk about, and, and people believe in them, and that's great. You can tell me that you believe in them, and give me the reasons A, B, C, D. Um, but from our perspective here at Peek Around the Corner is... After having so many discussions on this, I think my head is going to fall off my neck. 
is that it's got to be one in the court or there has to be a settlement for Florida State to release themselves from the grant of rights from this contract with ESPN. Uh, the grind is on. Florida State risk. They went to the courts. Clemson followed up eventually March 19th. They're in the courts as Pickens County. Um, and they're working to gain leverage. They're working to get advantage so they can work towards a settlement. So um, put down your comments. I'm going to open up the phone lines right now. Let me know. Besides the Henry Parish. Besides the Henry Parish. And I can't believe. I cannot believe. I just can't believe it. I don't know why he left. I mean, other than being frustrated that he hasn't gotten a rock more. Maybe it's an NIL thing. I have no idea what's going on. Anyways, besides that, let me know what I got wrong on the Miami Hurricane Spotlight. Call from BJ. BJ, the floor is yours. What do you got to say, good sir? Hey, what's up, Greg? Thanks for having me on again. You bet. Um, just a few quick things that I thought was comical this weekend. Um, the ACC seems to be like watching news clippings and like YouTube channels and basing their PR off that because, you know, I watched the ACC for 20 plus years, right? And since uh, Phillips has gotten there, he's kind of not really seen. He's kind of, he barely makes like uh, public appearances. But I've noticed this past weekend, he was at literally every ACC game. Who is this? Right? Jim Phillips. Oh, the ACC okay. Commissioner. I was thinking 20 years. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Okay. So, yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I thought it was kind of funny that, you know, because, you know, FSU and a lot of ACC folks, like, where were you fighting for, fighting for us, you know, for the football championship, this, that, and the third? And... There was no reply from it from him. He just pulled out like some kind of press conference letter or whatever. But now he's like on every time the ACC is like on national TV, he's there. And I think it has something to do with, you know, PR from the from the um, you know what's come of this lawsuit. Have you did you notice that? No, no, I did not. Oh yeah, oh he was everywhere. He was. Yeah. <laughs> he, and every every game he had like a different tie, you know, sporting the you know the ACC team's colors, um, which I thought it was kind of funny, you know, for lack of a better uh, term. Um, but but as it pertains to the lawsuit, uh, 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 the, the article you just read, I think the article was fair and balanced. I think anybody that's you know you know looking at it from an unbiased point of view would 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 um, agree. You know, home field advantage is the most important thing of this argument because if it wasn't the case, both sides wouldn't be going so hard to try to get home to an advantage. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like the definite decider in this. It's just, you rather have it in Leon County if we're Florida state than having it being done in Mecklenburg County. That's why they're fighting over the venue. Um, and according uh, sure. to what was said in this article, the lawyers think that that, that, you know, obviously that's the best case scenario for Florida State to get in Leon County. But that doesn't mean if it got to Leon County, it would go all their way. But they'd rather have it in Leon County than Mecklenburg County. No question about it. Agreed. And, you know, uh, I'm originally from, I was born and raised in Florida, but I don't. I live in Colorado now. Okay. But for like the last 20 years, I've been out here in, in uh, Boulder or uh, Denver. And um, I, I'll say this, you know, Florida laws are kind of odd right you know they've always been odd and um i am confident if it goes and it will proceed in florida just like i think it'll proceed in north carolina in a dual kind of way um the florida state will get the benefit of the doubt in florida just like i think the, uh, the atc being a north carolina company will get the benefit of the doubt in in North Carolina. I think that's pretty common. Everybody would somewhat agree to that. Well, I, 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 then I, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yep. 
And so what I look at is risk assessment, right? Is the, is the ACC willing to go on this years long battle that they may lose and they may get exposed or let's take, you know, pennies on the dollar, 250. Will, will the ACC accept 250 million? Um, in my eyes, I think accepting that money, there's only a handful of teams that can pony up $250 million to get out of a conference. For one, there's only a handful of teams that are even desirable to be promoted to the power two for two. So the 250, I think from four teams that give the conference roughly a billion dollars that will financially solidify the conference to make sure that nobody leaves and they can be more aggressive you know, in choosing who they allow to come in to the conference once these four teams leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, look, I, um, I, I look at it this way. Um, the ACC, you know, they expect this case to be handled in Mecklenburg County eventually, yeah. right? But if somehow, some way, because of how how they went about this process, you know, uh, filing a day before Florida State, not having legitimacy to do so, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's say it goes to let's say it goes to Leon County. That that is going that is going to be. Something that will very well, likely anyways, to spurn negotiation talks, right? Something that yeah. ACC is not expecting to happen, but does, if it happens in Land County, right there and then, you know, the AC is thinking, well, now we're going to have to litigate this in Leon County in the state of Florida for all these months, possibly a couple of years. Yeah. It doesn't mean necessarily that you know, a Leon County judge is going to be so biased that he that he declares the gore inval- invalid. None of that might might not even be a possibility. But the ACC's perception of this case, if it lands in Leon County, probably completely changes. And then it changes the situation possibly versus Clemson, and it might spurn uh, mediation pretty quickly here if that happens. But go on, BJ. You know, and I, I would agree. I think, I think the issue is not the focus should not be on winning. To me, it's not winning. I think when it continues in Florida, the ACC and ESPN should be, you know, fearful that discovery in Florida is going to reveal documents that you may not have discovery. You may not have discovery in North Carolina. But if you have if you have discovery in Florida, the cat is out of the bag. Yep. So uh, ultimately, ultimately, I think ESPN and ACC does not want the grant of rights and the media contract rather exposed. So whether it's North Carolina or Florida, if Florida allows that contract to be public record, I think that's when you'll immediately get. Uh, um, uh, negotiations. So and to me, it's not about winning or losing. Mm-hmm. I think Florida State knows we just want to get this contract out. The The vast majority of their argument in North Carolina was centered on unsealing the documents. And I think they know, and everyone else knows, ESPN and ACC does not want that contract to be public record because once it's public record, there's going to be a lot of inconsistencies between the grant of rights and the media contract, which will make it then unenforceable. Um, so I think it's not about winning. It's about getting that contract exposed. That's going to be Florida State's key to lead the conference. Got it. Got it. But, but thanks for having me on again. Love your show. I'll get back into the comment section. Have a Beautiful. blessed day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, BJ. Great call. Um, I just noticed um, 
I went into the Mecklenburg County Court. Um, I went in there and um, and there was an update notice of appearance, notice of appearance of Hannah Eckmeyer of Defendant Florida State Board of Trustees. Again, I don't know how to read any of this. It's probably not important, but I think this was definitely dropped today. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, let me pop this up so you can got you guys can read it. Uh, State of North Carolina, Atlanta Coast Conference Board of Trustees, Hannah Eek Ike. Ike Meyer of the law firm of Bradley Arant Bolt Cummings, a member in good standing of the Bar of North Carolina, gives notice of and enters her appearance in this matter on behalf of defendant Florida State Board of Trustees. So um, it looks like she's adding her name to the Florida State Board of Trustees attorneys for Florida State in Mecklenburg County. Um... I was, I popped in here and I wasn't expecting any update and I saw that. So I just wanted to show you that. Other than that, there's nothing new in Mecklenburg County between Clemson, uh, Clemson and the ACC and Florida State and the ACC. Um, now I'm going to quickly look. I'm going to give a quick look at Pickens County. Pickens County, there is nothing new in Pickens County. So nothing really new today in Pickens County, Mecklenburg County, and Leon County. Just to show you, I am, even during the show, I'm keeping an eye out, keeping an eye out for any breaking news. Uh, but it looks like Looks like there is nothing new. No announcement thus far of any of any date that we're going to get the ruling. Uh, Greg, can you explain the recent filings in Pickens County that has a date of 10-15? I did not see that. Let me go back in there. Oh, that's, that's Leon County. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Um. Ba ba ba, Pickens County. No idea. But well, let me show it up in the board. See if somebody can um, explain it in the chat. I'm gonna get this. Um, Okay, so these are the two entries. There was an entry for today, April 1st. Motion complex case designation. The filing. I'm going to pop this open. And then there was something about 10-15-2024 uh, alternative dispute resolution workflow. If anybody knows what that could possibly mean, alternative dispute resolution workflow for October 15th, that's that's way out there. But anyways, let's look at this. Uh, this was dropped today. 
Certif certificate of electronic notifications. So don't mean it. Don't mean anything as far as I'm concerned. So anyways, uh, really nothing new. Nothing new in any of the courts as far as I can tell. Any of the court systems. Okay, phone lines are open. 763-260-1333. We learned in the chat that, um, what, a week and a half ago, Parrish and Mario Cristobal said it was best if he departed. Where was I a week and a half ago? Where was I a week and a half ago? I did not see that. Here I am so pumped on Henry Parrish, and it looks like he's going to Ole Miss. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Call from... Nitwit. Nitwit, the floor is yours. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Greg. Great weekend. Yes. Uh, plus, we got a blue and white game coming up here at Penn State. Exciting times, my friend. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what What do you want to see in that uh, in that spring game for the Nittly Lions? Who you're looking at? Who do you Who do you hoping to see perform at a very high level? Well, obviously, you got to start with Drew Aller. Uh, you know, that's Anthony Kalanicki's offense. Yes, yes. Let's see what that difference is. Uh, really think he's playing to the strengths of the talent he has, so that's going to be something pretty exciting to watch. So uh, uh, you know how there's always hope in the spring. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I wanted to call in. I just My, my head's kind of spinning here because I, I, I'm trying to examine the incentives of the parties involved. So... I really feel the ACC needs FSU in the conference if they have any shot of getting a renewed contract with ESPN. Is that correct? Um, I mean, they need they, they need Florida State in the conference to keep keep at the level that they're at. I'm not. Uh, ESPN m might still be interested in an ACC product, but not at the payment, not at the level that they're giving it right now. If they should lose a Florida State, right? I mean, they built right. But if you if you were in the ACC, mm -hmm. you would want to keep FSU and Clemson yes. in order to extend that contract the way it was originally intended. Right? So there's one incentive. Yes. ESPN is getting content content about 30% cheaper. Yep. Now, what would their incentive be to not fulfill that that contract? Um, there, there is not what they're... Their incentive... I mean, that's for, what I mean, like... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, like you look at the incentives mm -hmm. of the parties involved. Yeah. And you and I have already talked about this on a previous... The Gore was set up to create an ACC network to discourage people from leaving the conference to create stability. Yeah. For the creation of the network so yeah we're all speculating here about like well you know this and that and this and that you have to look at the incentives of the people involved mm -hmm. right the fsu and clemson are vital for the survival of the acc network mm -hmm. and the contract that espn has with it yes so i, I agree there has to be there has to be uh, incentive created for the ACC to settle with Florida State. And right. Uh, at, right now, I don't believe there is an incentive. Yep. No. And I don't think there's an incentive for ESPN either. Yep. But so but let's say because I'm going to get I'm yep. getting content at a thirty percent discount. Yeah. But let's say 
Let's say what Florida State and Clemson are saying in the courts. Let's say there's some big time weakness. Uh, let's say the ACC and the ESPN. Remember, they're not. They haven't been really uh, aggressive in showing Judd Bledsoe the the documents of right. the ACC. Right? Maybe there is some right, but, major. But, but, let, let me but, let me but let me counter finish. that argument. Okay, you haven't let. You gotta let me finish here. Go ahead. What if there is some major screw up in those documents? What if there is? What if they're playing hide the ball because, as as Florida State declares it, because they they did a major screw up? That could be incentive to uh, to settle. What if just well, then if, the if there is a major screw, if there is a major screw up and it is actual fact. Well, then all the schools could get out of the grant of rights. Hmm. So, 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 so uh, I understand the challenge, but I don't need to go. Pitt doesn't need to go to a court case. They could just take it down and look at it with their lawyers and say, okay, you guys screwed up. So I'm, I'm leaving with my grant of rights. Who? What? <laughs> you, no. It, it, right? Like you're saying that there's a major screw up in the document. No, I'm not saying that there is, but I'm saying. Right. If it, there was. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying that there is a major screw up. I'm saying, what if there is something in that language that actually ACC and ESPN could get very worried about that there's something there? Because it's not like they're being aggressive and showing the uh, judge this doc, all these documents, right? right. What if there's something right. there that they're actually worried about? I don't know if it's true or not. I haven't seen it. But Clemson and Florida State hit, hit it pretty hard. And what if there? What if this venue goes to Leon County, and maybe they're saying, "Well, maybe there is incentive for Florida State to pay a settlement, so so we can, you know, because you know, if it, and it, it it isn't like if Florida State leaves and they pay like two hundred fifty million. It's not like every other school is going to pay that two fifty million to get out because they're not going to have a landing spot, and the schools that leave they're not going to pocket that two hundred fifty million. So some of those schools might be eventually incentivized to say to Jim Phillips, "I'll take the two fifty from Florida State, two fifty from Clemson, two fifty from North Carolina, two fifty from a four school." That's one billion dollars that we're sharing amongst each other. As long as you know ESPN can reduce. Our, our tier payments. I'm just giving you a possibility. There is, there is not the incentive now to settle, but there could be the incentive. We'll see what happens this week in Mecklenburg County. It could be. That's why. That's why Florida State and Clemson is doing this to drive incentive to get ACC to the negotiation table. But I agree with you. There's no reason to, to settle now, but there could be here in the future. Right. And and you said that it could be, depending yes. on if there's some big screw up in the grant of rights. Now, ESPN well, could just be going into the court saying, we don't want our trade secrets open, so that's why we want it sealed. That's actually a possibility, right? It could be, yes. <laughs> right. Well, I, think that's I, what I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying it could be. I, it could I, be. That could. I have no idea. Right, right. right. But I'm just saying that's what they're fighting for. Yes. Right. That's why they're involved in the court case because yes. they want their contract sealed, a contract that everybody agreed to, to create the ACC network. Okay. So. Yes. <laughs> but but okay. you know but you know Florida State signed these papers. And in, uh, in these documents, it does say um, subject to the for the ability of the institution to keep everything confidential. So the state of so Florida State is arguing because we're in the state of Florida, we can't keep these media deals confidential. If right because so of the laws, yeah, we need to have this open. So. Again, they're trying to drive ACC to the table. You're arguing that they haven't done, they, they haven't accomplished it yet. I would agree with you, but that's why they're in right. the courts. We haven't had any right, decisions. Right. We have had no rulings from the judges. 
So uh, I, I, we'll see how the court cases yes, play out. Yes, yep, yep. What I'm saying, who holds all the cards in this? Like, this is what people are talking about. So ESPN is holding the cards to this. Like, can you imagine the leverage that ESP ha- has? Like, they could hold this extension out there. You know, it's surprising they didn't say they're going to extend it already, right? They haven't said that, the contract. Wow, that's my question. Why haven't they? Why didn't they say right. 2021, 2022, 2023? Right. Uh, think about this. So they have a partnership with the SEC. Could ESPN use this grant of rights to say, okay, these four schools need to go to the SEC? And then once we get this started, then we won't renew the contract. And am I correct in saying if ESPN does not renew the contract because they own the ACC network, then the grant of rights don't exist anymore? I think the grant. I think no matter what, the grant of rights is going to go to at least 2027, where it where they signed when everybody signed the right. 2013 agreement. It right that went to 2027. ESPN right. has the ability to back out after 2027, so I think the grant right. of rights would stay into 2027. But now, think about the cards that ESPN holds. Yes, they hold a lot of cards. Yep. They could just sit here and wait, and they could dictate who goes to the SEC. Possibly. If, if, if they want North Carolina, Clemson, Florida State, and Miami to the SEC, they could just say, if this doesn't happen, we're, I'm going to hold the grant of rights. They don't have the grant of rights. The ACC owns the grant of rights. ESPN owns the Right, but they the could extend the contract. Yeah. Right, they could threaten to... Uh, we can extend this contract the way it is, or I want these four schools in the SEC so that we have more value there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's a weird position that that ESPN is in here. Yeah. That, like, and that's where I always said in the beginning is ESPN is not a fair actor in this because they have a conflict of interest. You understand think, what I'm saying? Yeah, and 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 I, I, and I have and I have speculated on this show, saying you know ESPN they could play the invisible hand on this, right? The invisible velvet hand. ESPN they could make some things move, but I'm not I I'm not on that bus anymore because after <laughs> after ESPN filed what they filed in Land County and what they said about Florida State. I don't think that's going to, that's not really, um, ESPN wants the ACC to stay intact. Um, right. My There's question, their incentive. My question though is why, and I don't have an answer, is why has it? Now I said at the beginning of the show, I said it in the early peak cloak and dagger episode that we're getting no, none of this talk to us about how the ESPN has already declined their option for 2027 and beyond, like other people are reporting. We haven't heard any of that. But I, my question is, why haven't they said, yeah, we're going to extend the option from 2027 and beyond? Why did they even need a dead? Why did they need the deadline extended from 2021, which, which was the previous deadline? Why did that get pushed four years? It make, to me, that question hasn't been asked to ESPN in a way that I would like it to be asked. Why? Yeah, I, I'm with you, Greg. Yeah. That's the money question yeah. that both you and I would want to hear yeah. is, one, why? And two, why haven't they extended it again already? Because it's almost like, like you said, ESPN has a conflict of interest because they represent two different competing conferences. So they can hold out as long as they want to kind of force whatever outcome they want. Do you understand what I mean? So I always said that the grant of rights is, 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 is null and void because ESPN has a conflict of interest with a competitor conference. 
Therefore, they can no longer make decisions that are best in the best entrance of the ACC. But Florida State didn't make that argument. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, you know what? Uh, I'll let you go, Greg. You I don't want to take up too much of your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for yep, the phone call. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Great phone call by Nitwit Carey. Goal knows the ACC and ESPN are trying to make deceptions, commitments, practice. That BS ain't going to float. Thank you so much for your super chat, for your continued generosity. Carey Goal knows. Very much appreciated. Thank you so very much. Um, Country Roads. Mr. Mountaineer, the ACC probably has extra stuff for Notre Dame to incentivize them to stay with the ACC and non-revenue sports. They may get a full share, even though not football member. This would definitely upset other members. They're not getting a full, they're not getting a full share. Um, but Notre Dame is getting quite a lot in that relationship with the ACC. No question about that. Thank you, Country Rose, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Once again, call from Immaculate. Immaculate, the floor is yours. How you doing, Mr. Haka? Doing pretty good. How's your April first going for you? Good, good, good. I, I, I do not like April first. I, in fact, <laughs> in fact, um, 2022, March 31st, late at night, nine o'clock, eight o'clock. I sent out two tweets. Um, I was instructed to send out two two tweets about USC. That's the night we broke that story that USC is talking to the Big Ten. And then I, I said, this is not an April 1st fool's joke. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. It's not an April. I couldn't stand it that it was April 1st the next day because everyone thought. Like they were was, playing a joke on you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nah. But anyways, I mean, not, uh, not, not huh? this line, but just that like making you go through that. Yes, I couldn't stand it. But anyways, Immaculate, what, what do you got to say, good sir? What's going on? Well, I I just listen in. I don't know if there's a whole lot to really talk about, but I just wanted to kind of maybe go in a little bit even further than you did in that um, with, with the question you and Nick were bringing up there at the end, I think is very valid, good good conversation there, and that I I don't really – understand anymore why people still think that ESPN looks at the ACC and their deal as a good deal. I get it before, but when we learned about this opt-in situation, mm -hmm. to me, it changed everything. It changed the entire, my entire perspective of that relationship. Um, number one, if it was good, now, now there was COVID at the time, so I can understand maybe as a company, you're not quite sure if, how this everything is going to get affected. We didn't know if these sports are going to be able to continue on. So it made sense at the time that they might want a little time, that the commissioner might have given them a little time. But in five years, maybe at the time, or actually, yeah, about five years, four to five years, that's reasonable because we didn't know anything at the time about how long stuff was going to last. That's over with, though. It's, it's done. And these these live sports now are stronger than ever. Numbers are better than ever. Um, to me, if if you're happy with your relationship with the ACC as ESPN, there's no reason to hold out from opting in right now, especially with all this going on. Like you coming in and saying we're opting in, how much strength does that give to the ACC? I mean, yeah. they, they literally could walk into this right now. You know, they come in and they file their brief of support and – and they want to protect their their trade secrets or whatever, but they're not really protecting the ACC. They could. They could just be like, we're in right now. I mean, it's not like they have to wait until February of next year to say that. Yeah, That's they don't. the deadline. Yeah. That, that, that's like they have to do it by. So to me, 
it feels to me like they're holding off from saying we are not going to opt into this deal. Now, that doesn't mean that they want to be done with the ACC. It just tells me that they actually don't think it's as good of a deal as people seem to think it is. You know, they look at it in terms of payout for the SEC versus the SEC, and people think, oh, that's a great deal because it's costless. Well, are they? What, what value are they getting out of it? Like the SEC deal, as much as they're paying, they're still getting way more value out of it than what they're paying. Whereas with the ACC, are they? Most of those games end up on ESPN2 well, or ESPN+. Plus. Mm-hmm. We, we know that the ACC network is profitable. Because the ACC schools are getting about $4 million each on that. And they wouldn't be getting that if it wasn't profitable. Uh, it has almost as many subscribers as SEC Network, or it may have a couple million more. It's either a couple million more or a couple million less. They're not, they're not going to get the ad buys and everything like that. But it is profitable. Now, how much are they making on the, on the big money, on the Tier 1, like, uh, like SEC makes? I don't know. Good question. I don't know. Yeah, and, and part of the thing against the SEC, like, number one, the ACC has more um, sports. Uh, they they have more sponsored sports than any other conference in the country. Mm-hmm. And fans of that conference seem to care about more sports. So I can see why that network has some value. That doesn't necessarily mean that the money that it's making for those schools is the money that was initially promised to them when they signed the dotted line sure. in 2016. Yep. And that's been a point of Florida State going back, mm-hmm. is that what the ACC network has done is not what was promised. That doesn't mean it's not profitable. It's just, you know, they're saying the, the considerations of the contract of what was promised have not been met. I don't know if that's true or not. I couldn't even begin to get into that. But to me, I, I I don't know everything when it comes to stuff. So I try to find a few, one or two or whatever, defining situations just to kind of get an understanding. And to me, that's, that's this opt-in status. It's the fact that ESPN could solve this problem and, they, and they're choosing not to. So I, I tend to think that they're, they don't want to opt in with this and that they want to renegotiate a new deal with the conference. But they also don't want to do that before, if like if departures are going to happen, they don't want to renegotiate before that because now you're negotiating with ACC in their moment of strength. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's almost like they're waiting for this to happen to then pull that trigger to say, we either we're opting out or we have to renegotiate this, which ACC has no power in that. Like they're just going to have to say yes or, or who's going to pick them up? Fox? No. NBC, CBS, probably not. Like Apple, I mean, were we once again back to doing what the pack was doing? I actually, I actually think in the future they might, but that's a whole nother story. Um, so I'm, that's where I'm sitting at in this is that ESPN is not actually doing the ACC any favors. The only thing that they're doing in that court case is protecting themselves. And so that means what are they protecting themselves from? When they talk about trade secrets, and you guys, you and Nit were talking about that, and give credit to that as well. Like, what, what is in that media deal between the ACC and ESPN? You know, that's the members didn't necessarily vote for all of that. Like yep. the ACC yep. people wrote that up with ESPN. So now the membership is saying, "Well, no, we want to see what's in that." And I, I don't know how you know, the legal ramifications of that. Um, and I don't necessarily think that ruins every other gore if there's some messy stuff in yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make that clear to folks who might be like, oh, God, this is going to ruin everything everywhere. Not necessarily. No, no. So, we'll, I mean, we'll see. Granite Rights has a very, uh, has a very um, successful record in the courts when yeah. it's challenged. In yeah, other words, it's absolutely. Been, so it's been undefeated. So this could be, um, you know, this could be a major, just some major screw up. That's that's. Um, I don't. Yeah, they're not really attacking the gore, though, are they? No, they're really not attacking the gore. They're attacking the media agreement. Yep. 
Yeah. 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 That's so. just to kind of clarify to people because it kind of, it all starts to get jumbled yeah. together and it's, it's yeah. two very different things. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's all I, I just wanted to bring that up to kind of portray that for folks to look at that and say, I, I, I don't think any of this exists if ESPN was opting in with ACC. I think the ACC knows it. So we'll see how this goes. I think this is going to move here pretty quick. Got but, it. Uh, appreciate it, man. Beautiful. Great show, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Got it. Great call, Mr. Hawkeye. <laughs> Excellent, excellent call. Now, did anybody in the chat, has any of you, has any of you uh, watched my episode 385 of today? Five transfers who are playing some pretty good ball in spring practice. Did you notice who was number two on the list? Anybody? Call from Rock and Rant. Rock and Rant. Mr. Hurricane, he's coming. Rock and Rand is going to yell at me because it all went pear shape when I was doing the spotlight of the Miami Hurricanes. Where, where <laughs> did my Henry Parrish go? I was all excited about him. And suddenly, hey, hey. he's not even a hurricane. <laughs> Holy smokes. P it's hard to keep up with 131 teams there, Greg. You know, P-A-T-C I understand. P-A-T-C takes the big L today. Holy smokes. Go ahead, Rock and Rant. The floor is yours. It, it happens, right? You got uh, 130 plus teams <laughs> to try to keep, stay on top of, depending upon whatever the latest stat is. And, I, and this I won't just happened. Much time. I, I, yeah, it happened on the uh, 18th or 19th, um, right before the Miami Pro Day, yeah. when it got announced after about a week or so of um, – so. Spring practice, I, the way Miami does spring practice, I think they started and did a week and then they had spring break. And then when they came back is when I think it happened. And even uh, Josh Pate happened to be there that day. Uh, and he alluded to like Miami probably already having a, an additional plan in addition to the team, the guys yeah. that were already on roster. So I would expect somebody okay. to come over in the transfer portal. But uh, sure. listen, I think that guy, you know, I think you're excited to be Parish, um, a, a Parish fan. And I think he'll... I, th- I think ultimately what it comes down to is he's really good in a lot of things um, across the board. He's very consistent back, but not necessarily great in anything. And therefore, he was probably not going to get the full looks that he might want to have to put on tape. And when his coach goes back to Ole Miss, I think you know, he has a better shot of being the feature back there Got it. and get more stuff in your in your year before you're going to go pro. He, so He had a good year last year, happened. man. He did, but he also there's also a couple of games where he didn't even – Touch the ball. Um, I know I he didn't get help. the rock. That was my big point. Uh, maybe that's why yeah. he's, I don't know. I was frustrated because, you know, I get this running back of committee thing, Mario Cristobal does, but man, when a guy, he, he runs his running backs hot and cold all the time. Now, now granted Miami's had some injuries in the, in the running back room, right? Over the last few years. That yeah. makes it. Uh, anyways, it's, go ahead. It, it's been a it's been a rotation, but I, you yeah. know, listen. I think your assessment was pretty good. You know, in terms of the Cam Ward stuff, you know, time will tell. It's yeah. it's one thing to be on the field and uh, in spring practice and, and lighting it up. It's another thing when somebody crushes you from behind that you're not expecting. But hopefully, he's going to have a a stronger offensive. Well, I'm I'm pretty positive he's going to have a much stronger offensive line okay. in front of him than he did over in uh in the pack two. So that could hopefully yeah. mitigate some of the fumbling things, and I know they're working on it. He's done all the right things since he's been there, you know, taking all 18. When you get in that kind of NIL deal, taking out all 18 linemen for a steak dinner is something you can achieve, and he's done that kind of stuff. So hopefully that will be the case. And, I, you know, they've had a really great defensive line recruiting class, like they had the offensive line the year before. It takes a little bit longer for those guys to break through. But then again, Bain broke through in his freshman year, so you never know. I think the – the names to look out for there and we'll can move off of it is wide receivers like Jojo Trader, who was a four star on the same team that Jeremiah Smith played for. He went to ultimately went to Ohio state and maybe got overlooked a little bit. He's the one that makes you excited about what the wide receiver room could be in, in addition to Restrepo and the others. But he's also an example of the reasons that the reports coming from practice that you don't know what the defensive backfield is going to be like, because you don't know whether the offense is just really on or, 
the defensive backs are suspect or a combination thereof. So yeah. I, you will probably see some some players come in the transfer portal. And then uh, besides Elijah Arroyo coming back, there's a freshman from Bishop Gorman in Nevada, which is where Brevin Jordan played at Miami and is now on Houston, is like the latest in the line of tight ends coming from there. So we'll see. You know, it's lying season. We're all should be in lying season. I <laughs> think teams going to be in the spring. You know, there's there's four more months before, you know, pads are back on. So if you're not going to have Pope Eternal and, and lie right now, um, you know, I think the interesting thing in the ACC is if you just look at Vegas, right, and they're pretty good about this stuff, you have uh, three teams all with an over under at nine and a half, at, the, at least on the opening odds. And that was Florida State, Clemson, and Miami. So time will tell. Mario will probably cost us a game here or there on a coaching decision. Maybe he realizes that. And hopefully his recruiting – Game just a game that we wouldn't have gotten just from getting the talent. So, now you, you, but I think you, your assessment's pretty fair. You know? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So the whole thing wasn't pear shaped. Then, um, I no, follow it just, Miami it was just pretty a Paris closely. Thing. I yeah, follow Miami Paris pretty thing. closely. That's why it shocked me when I did not get that news of a week and a half ago. Um, uh, what was I going to ask? Uh, Miami plays. Now is that game? In Gainesville at the beginning of the season, where is that game at? Yeah, opening game is home of the most is played at home of the most delusional fan base in America. Okay. So, so uh, Gainesville, so, so we uh, are starting there. So Graham Mertz, surprisingly good year last year. Um, yeah, we'll 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 find out about the Hurricanes secondary in that game. If they hold up, um, if they win that game, I think the Hurricanes might be off to the races. They got, I think after that, they've got some games that I think Florida A&M and somebody else, I think they can get a good start of the season, right? Yeah, for sure. There's, a, you know, the thing with the Florida game is I give them a chance because it's at home. But, you know, I think their over-under wins is five and a half. You know, Billy Naker has really got a, a big bullseye on him. So, you know, even I, I know that I'll be thrilled because I despise Florida. It makes Florida State seem like a, a friendly rival just for a multitude of other reasons. But I also won't get too excited because I personally don't think Napier is going to even finish the season. So, um, so I don't want to get too high about yeah. even if Miami would uh, be really successful there. But but we shall see. You know, speak, fan fiction is to be written. And whether it's this or getting out of uh, – Grant the rights in three hours because some guy on a message board said it. Um, as Florida State fans are, you know, hoping to have happen, which is, yeah. you know, I understand that, but ultimately they might win it from the actual legal case, and you know, maybe some outlier happens. But I think you're 100 percent right on that front yeah. as well. As much as I think we'd all love to see utter chaos break out, just because it's amusing at a minimum, and yeah. uh, could give you shows for days if it were to happen, yeah, but um, yeah. you know, I think you have the, the right assessment there. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it, sir. Thanks for the, uh, yeah, no worries. Thanks for the overall view on Miami. Appreciate it. Rock and rant. Great call. Have a great one, man. You too, man. Heartbreak 25. Maybe I missed it, but did Josh paid ever admit his sources were wrong on the CFP negotiations. I don't know. I, I don't really watch the show much. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, mm, I said it at the time. I did not agree with what, well, whoever was telling them stuff, but I opened, I, I opened up the possibility that I could be wrong at PATC, but, um, but we weren't. And Josh Pate, he did this whole stick of they're just doing this. The Big Ten and the SEC are just doing these negotiations, playoff negotiations to say we tried. And he kept repeating that. And I had a lot of people give me that in my in this show and on DMs. And I kind of had to put the brakes on it. Much like I'm doing with all this talk about Florida State becoming an independent program in 2024. ESPN already letting ACC schools that they declined, that they declined to have ACC content for 2027 beyond. 
Um, I'm not doing that to be a Scrooge. I'm not doing that to be a jerk. I'm not doing that to be, you know, I'm, I'm just giving you guys what, what information I've received. And I ask over and over again, I poke and prod, um, take whatever I say with a grain of salt, but you know, we're just a little out rebel outpost YouTube channel. That's all we are, but all we are, but all we have is our credibility. Um, so I don't say it lightly that this is not happening, this is not happening, this is not, but this could possibly happen. This could possibly, happen. this is happening. Um, but again, we had to take the L on Clemson. Eventually Clemson did file, but we had to take the L on the timing. But most of it, we've been pretty on. Um, Now, I, I disagree, Immaculate. Josh Pate, what I saw, what I saw, Josh Pate kept saying in the playoff negotiations that the Big Ten and the SEC were not playing. They were just putting things out because they wanted to say we tried and then they'd break away. Uh, I heard that from my own ears. Um, and they were not doing that. Of course, they, they had some sort of brinkmanship going on. But they did not want to do a breakaway. They were not set up to do a breakaway. They did not. It was not something that could have happened in 2026. I heard him say it over and over and over again. And people kept sending me um, those little videos of it. Greg, I think technically Florida State will be independent for about a week. <laughs> Probably longer than a week. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. It all depends, right? I mean, when you file when you file your notice of withdrawal, you're still a conference member for another year. Now, if that's how it goes, uh, Florida State will not be an independent for a week. You file your, your notice of withdrawal. You got to you got to file a notice of withdrawal before August 15th of 2024 for Florida State to become out of the conference in July 1st, 2025. So if they do that, on August 15th, they file their notice of withdrawal. They get a deal with the Big Ten beginning July 1st, 2024. They're not going to be an independent uh, for any amount of time, but they could possibly. Florida State being an independent 24, don't think it's going to happen. Don't think it's going to happen. Um, anyways, phone lines are open. 763-260-1333. Uh, is this, uh, you talking Oklahoma State? Ohio State is on April 13th. I will not be here that, that I will not be in town on April 12th, 13th or the 14th. Unfortunately. Um I will be in some hotel room somewhere with the wife. The wife has stuff to do. Um uh, I'll be watching the Ohio State game, but I won't be doing a show on it. Call from Steve. Steve, the floor is yours. How you doing, sir? Hey, buddy. How you doing? doing hey, listen, good. Uh, just, a, just a quick question. Uh, yeah, I heard you say Josh Payton. You didn't think that uh, that the Big Ten and the SEC would pull away. I don't think they will in 2026 either. I, I'm with you. Just a little background. Uh, me and I have three brothers that played in the Big Ten. But I think what they're going to do is look in in 2028, and as soon as they rack up all the schools and they get them all together, I do believe they'll look to break away then. I mean, look at it this way. I never thought Oregon and Washington would ever be in the Big Ten or Oklahoma or Texas would ever be in the SEC. So to say that those two conferences will get to a point where maybe they've had enough with Notre Dame, They've had enough of Washington State and Oregon. Say, you know what? 
But I don't think it's 2026. I think Josh Pate's wrong there. But I do think when they get that look in, that's going to be interesting in 2028. I, that's when you're going to see the Big Ten and SEC really put their cards on the table. What do you think? Well, I, 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 I hold out for the possibility. There is a possibility that there could be a Big Ten and SEC breaking away in the yeah. years, years from now. And when I receive that real smoke coming from real fire, I will talk about it then. Um, but it just wasn't going to happen for 2026. And there was, it just wasn't going to happen for so many different reasons. Now, that, that, that college football playoff contract goes until 2031. They've all signed it. I highly doubt, no matter what happens in realignment, no matter what happens in this world, <laughs> I highly doubt that playoff access is going to be cut off from anybody that's an FBS for 2024 to 2031. So if there's going to be a true SEC playoff only breakaway or a true Big Ten SEC only playoff breakaway or something of that effect, I think the, the reality that only can really start in 2032 and beyond. That's my take on it. But is a possibility in the future? Yes. If I receive any real smoke and fire on it, like I did, you say you never believed Oregon or Washington. We were saying that Oregon and Washington was going to happen within the next five months or the next five years. We were all over that story because Fox Sports wanted them. Um, if I receive that same smoke or fire on a Big Ten SEC breakaway, I'm going to report that here at Peek Around the Corner. But we got nothing of that. Um, so we we reported it wasn't happening. Not for 2026. Okay, buddy. One more quick question. Yeah. I'll let you go. What, doesn't that 2028 look in? Isn't that, uh, that's interesting to me, that 2028, like, okay, what is that really about? That that look-in is interesting because that interesting can be triggered by either um, by either a material realignment, whatever that is. We don't know, like a uh, realignment within the power four conferences, or they're going to be a look-in, and I don't know how it gets triggered. Maybe it triggers automatically, but a look-in and where they're going to see how the performances are of every conference. So if let, let's say a Big 12 is, is, is performing better than the distribution model, better than whatever, if there's any automatic qualifying, we don't know if that's going to be part of the new format or not. But if there is some overperformance by a conference, then that looking clause can be in effect somehow in where they change the distribution model or possibly the automatic qualifying birth part of that model um, if there is automatic qualifying births beyond the conference champions. So that looking clause uh, is probably, um, they haven't really spelled it out to us though, Steve. I mean, it's probably easily triggered um, I don't think it's automatically triggered, but it's probably easily triggered if there's a realignment or if there's some sort of performance, overperformance by a conference. It's interesting, but I don't think that's going to, I don't think that looking clause has the power to finish the current playoff contract because we, it was reported by many outlets that there were protections granted to the ACC, to the Big 12, and to G5 conferences. They were protected insofar as the G5 are going to have their playoff access to 2021, 2031, and the ACC Big 12 champions are going to be protected and where it, there's protections granted to them. So I don't see a breakaway, a clear breakaway until at least 2032, if then. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, buddy, thanks for clearing that up. Me and my brothers are huddled here. It's a shame that we played in the Big Ten and we, we don't even know the rules. But we're just catching on your show. We love your show. Uh, very, very thorough. What? Very thorough. So Thank you. All what, right, what, buddy. What team did you play for? 
Purdue, Indiana, and Wisconsin. There you go. All right. Badger, yeah. Portland. Now this, is going, now, this is going back. This is going back to the 80s. We're older guys. We're going back to when Bill Mallory was sure. at uh, Indiana. Alvarez was at Wisconsin. So, yeah, we're, well, going, we're going Joe Taylor. I'm that We're age. going back. So you played in the Metrodome then? Yeah. That's terrible, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, right. it's funny because, like, I'll give you a real quick story here. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then I'm not going to say which one, but one of us got drafted, played in the NFL. I'll tell you the worst place, the worst place ever is when we went into, oh, no, I gave it away, but when we went into Philadelphia, and I remember showing up and, and walking downstairs to the locker room, and they had a, a, a jail down there. And I asked the guy, where's my rookie year? I said, why is there a jail down there? He goes, oh, the fans here are brutal. Brutal. <laughs> they just lock them up and take away. And I swear, you had rats running around in the locker room. That was the old, um, God, what did they call that? Old Philadelphia. Um, uh, yeah. I forget the name of it. But it was it. brutal. So it wasn't, as, it wasn't as bad as that, but it, but it, wasn't, it wasn't good either. Yeah. Beautiful. Steve, please call again, sir. All right, buddy. All Have right. a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Beautiful. Beautiful. The vet. Ooh. The vet. Veteran Stadium. Veteran Stadium. Uh, Clemson, Rob, Allen. Why? My brain is just not. Something's wrong today. I couldn't remember the vet. I didn't know that Henry Parrish was no longer a hurricane of a week and a half ago. Tell you what, man, this is not a very good performance. If you want to talk about performance, Big 12 commissioner said on 365 last Thursday, they could have a look in before 28 if more realignment happens. They also talked about performance. Immaculate, your mark did mention it also about performance. Well, there's a, I, I'm very fortunate that there is not a look in clause to this Rebel Outpost College Football YouTube channel. Because my performance today has been brutal. The phone lines are open. 763-260-1333. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't done so, and if you can overlook my brutal performance today, please subscribe to our channel and have your notifications on. We can come on live at any time. If there's breaking news, we're coming on live. So subscribe to our channel, have your notifications on, and smash that like button if you like our content. Now, if you want to become a member, whoops, whoops, I didn't mean that. If you want to become a member, early P Cloak and Dagger member, we dropped an episode this morning, members only, episode 30. If you want a little bit of Cloak and Dagger info before we talk about it live, become a member. Go to the link provided in the description box. Hit the link, then hit the join button and become a member of the Rebel Outpost YouTube channel, Cloak and Dagger. Call from JD. JD, Mr. Seminole is on the line. How you doing, sir? What's going on Monday, April uh, 1st? Well, I bet you're tired of talking to me, aren't you? No, I'm not. I love talking <laughs> with you. I absolutely I love talking with you. Are you kidding me? You are what is this? This this is what this show is built for. For people like JD, for the hot guy immaculate, for Nitwit, for the people who call in. Rock and Ran, and for all the people who go in the chat room, I love it. Absolutely. No, JD, we, we're not definitely not sick of you. We are excited you called. What's on your mind, sir? What's going on? Well, I appreciate the kind words. I'm just a, I'm just, just a fan that loves my nose. And, uh, you know, I, I, I try to set the record straight, you know, I appreciate you. I feel like you provide very factual information, and I've said this in the past. You go to extreme efforts to tamp things down, clarify things, and, and 
and not go down a road you're not comfortable to go down, you know? So I, I, I appreciate you trying to be as responsible in your reporting as possible. Um, however, I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's no, however, with you, Okay. I've come to realize, especially in the last few days, we don't know what we think we know. And the national media, when it comes to the ACC, they don't know what they think they know. Okay. There are so many, I'm going to say this and I, and I believe this 100%. The ACC and ESPN has been lying to everybody. Now, does that mean that FSU is going to walk out of this case and, or walk out of this whole thing, you know, scot-free with, with very little effort? No, no, I don't believe that at all. Or otherwise we wouldn't be in court, but there's just a lot of assumptions that have been made. And now, anytime there's national reporting on certain aspects of it, I'm looking at it cross-eyed. I'm like, you don't know. You, you thought this thing went to 2036. You didn't know about the look-in. You didn't know about the unilateral options that, that uh, Jim Phillips took. You didn't know about all these things. Most of a lot of the ACC conference members didn't even know. You, you know, why... Why would they have given Jim Phillips certain rights or approved certain things if they knew? You know, they wouldn't have. And there's just been so much deception. You know, you and I have, have, have debated a little bit about this. Um, I think the, the ACC and ESPN and the networks in general have tried to redefine the authority you know, in a grant of rights. And it goes back to some of our debates or our conversations and so on from last week and, and, and so on. And does it mean things moving forward? And I want to, if you'll humor me just for a couple of minutes here. I, I will. I want to I, I get to the basics here. Let, let's just get to the basics because we have so many, and I don't mean necessarily you and I. We have a good friendly debate and. I think we agree most of the time. Sometimes yes. we don't, yeah. but I think we agree most of the time. And there's a lot of times that, uh, if you can't tell, I'm debating things that I don't necessarily believe. Sure. But I believe uh, there's there, there's something there. Okay. Um, I catch flack for that on the message board sometimes when I'll throw out a theory and I don't necessarily believe it. But some people are like, "How could you even?" you know, theorize this, or how could you even come up with this concept? And I'm like, well, I kind of view the message boards and Twitter and everything else as a sounding board. If I'm not right, somebody's going to prove me wrong, or at least I hope so. But anyway, what is a grant of rights? Does a, is a grant of rights, in your opinion, a standalone document, or, it's, or is it specifically tied to a contract? I, it specifically, it specifically tied to a contract. However, within that media agreement between the media partner and the in the conference, that the 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 the. the the media partner believes, and traditionally this is the case, that they have the distribution rights of each school in that contract, regardless of whatever conference they're in. And the ACC owns the, the media rights of that school, regardless of whatever whatever conference they're in. So that is the difference between me and what a lot of other people are. Traditionally, that traditionally that is what is believed what happens between all the parties. Florida State gives their ownership of their their games, home games, to the conference, so that a media partner can 
have confidence in the product that the ECC is willing to let this media partner distribute for such and such a number of years. And so what, what the ACC gets is better leverage. What the Florida State, in theory, the schools in the AC get, in theory, is a better payout. And what ESPN gets is security and security, knowing that no one's probably going to leave the conference because they're not going to be valuable anywhere else. And if they do, ESPN still has the distribution rights and they give the money to the ACC per that media agreement and the ACC delivers the money per what is going on in the ACC bylaws, which means the withdrawal member doesn't get that money. That's how I view it. So it is tied okay. to a contract, but it isn't tied, but it's, but it doesn't mean that if someone leaves a conference, it's all fine and Danny, everything's cut off. Okay. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I have my own take, but I still have a, another question or two, and I promise this ain't going to be a 30 minute phone call because you'll cut me off beforehand. No, but, no uh, problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, can a grant of rights, in your opinion, exist without a contract? Well, um, Because this is where pro, everybody but, gets pro, confused. No, I, I'm just no, going back no, to the not, basics. Not, not, no, it can't. Okay, okay. Now you, 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 we're touching on some really important things here. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of assumptions. There is transitive properties that people are extending the grant of into contracts. In other words, let me back up here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. The ACC grant of only only applies to the ACC and its conference members. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. In, in, in other words, well, it, it, I, I don't know. I mean, that is what Clemson and Florida State are um, arguing that it does only for conference members but it, it, traditionally I'm talking about what we've all believed to be true is that the conference is negotiating for the schools and the conference as a whole the better leverage you're bundling all the tier one together you're bundling all the tier two you're bundling all the tier three content you're selling it to media companies and that media co company is not just saying traditionally, the media company is not saying, well, I have distribution rights for the conference. Now, if a school leaves, I don't have distribution rights for that school anymore. That's not the case. They have distribution rights to Florida State, Clemson, whoever, peer, based on that kind, traditionally. Now, so no, I cannot agree that, um, I don't know, it may be, Look, Florida State and Clemson may be 100% correct in how that language is said in the contract. And if it is, then they've got a chance for a really low settlement. But I don't know if well, that's the case. Well, that's where, where we, our biggest disagreement, and I'm not saying necessarily you and I, I'm no, just talking about in, 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 I'm talking about in college football fans that follow this case is we base a lot of our understandings based on the information that ESPN and the ACC have told us. We base everything on that. And, and our biggest misunderstanding is we believe that the ACC contract and grant of rights can interject itself into the contract of another conference. It can't. It has no authority. The grant of rights has limited authorities. The ACC contract has limited authorities. Okay? So, ESPN doesn't have a contract with the individual schools, but has a contract with the ACC, and the ACC has a grant of rights over its institutions. We all agree on that. Now, 
The next process is what happens when a team exit. The ACC says, oh, well, we still have your grant of rights when you go to another conference. You don't have authority to claim the rights of another conference but, but because JD, you, don't, but JD, you don't have a contract with But, them. J.D., let me ask you this then. Why, sure. if that's the case, why is there a grant of rights at all if, if there is no authority? Because, because they tried to redefine the rights associated with the grant of rights uh, they I, try to redefine it yeah, in other words they they've tried to say that it allows future performance even right. when you're not under contract well that will not st- that will not stand up in court well we that will, will not stand up in yeah, court we will have to uh we will have to agree to disagree i am not when i say that though i'm letting the possibility that ESPN and the ACC screwed up in their language, okay? But I'm just telling you, traditionally, that's what a grant of rights does. You no what? longer have your rights to your media until that end of the contract is over, which is 2036. You don't have it. It don't matter if you leave the conference. That's what traditionally a grant of rights, that's what gives the media company security. See, if... If you say that grant of rights over over if you say that grant of rights act uh, disappears over Florida State if they leave the conference, then really there's no yeah, grant. Of, well, then there's no well, grant no, of let rights. Me, uh, then there's let, let me yeah. go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, the reason go ahead. I'm interrupting go ahead. you is is because well the reason I say that it's a possibility because there is a belief. That when if FSU or Clemson announce their exit from the, the 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 conference, there's language, and this is what they've alluded to, and that's why I've gone down this road. They've that, that there's language to suggest in the ACC agreement they're no longer a part of the contract. In other words, there is a break between, and what and the reason I think this is possible. The the ACC schools don't have a contract with ESPN. You know, there's no, there's not there, it's not directly with them. Yeah, I think what these what these lawyers and, and people are alluding to is there's a break there. The loophole is that there's not a direct contractual obligation directly okay. to ESPN and, and so on. Here. There's a loophole in there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, 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 I get all that. And you know what? Florida State and Clemson might be absolutely correct. Um, but but I also want to throw this in here. Um, I want to make it perfectly clear to everybody that everybody in the ACC, including Notre Dame, has seen the ACC ESPN media agreement. Okay? They've seen it. They've gone and they've looked at it and there's different opinions on it. So, Notre Dame, Jack Swarbrick, he's seen it. They've looked at it. And Jack Swarbrick says, I think the case, ACC case, is pretty strong. Other people have said it. So, there's a difference of opinion on this. But more than Clemson and Florida State have looked at it. Um, that is why, you know, I don't know what is, I don't know if there's a break in their media agreement. I don't know if it says that if Clemson and Florida State leave the contract, it, it, it's, they've written it in a way in which Florida State and Clemson are no longer held to the ground of rights. I don't know that. Um, and that is something that I hope gets put out there, uh, at least to the judge for him to see, hopefully... Uh, ESPN, uh, ACC gives all those documents to Judge Bledsoe. That could be the big, the big, the big uh, story out of this. But I don't know what it says because other people have looked at it and said, "Nope, no, nah, ACC has a strong, strong case." So, well, we're the biggest. We've identified the biggest disagreement, or maybe just difference of opinions, is when the teams declare they're leaving the conference and exit the conference are they still under contract 
And that's, you know, I'm hearing no. I'm here. Well, there's, traditionally. And, and, there, and there's, wait, go ahead. I'm sorry. Traditionally, yes. Absolutely, Tradi- they are. Because traditionally, why? yes. Absolutely, yes. Because, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, and I've asked other people this. If that isn't the case, then why is there ground of rights involved at all? This is exactly what the ground of rights does. It protects the conference. All this, it protects the conference. It protects the media company. That is why they're in this agreement. You as an institution have given up your rights for some sort of protection. Now for Florida State, it hasn't worked out because the ACC uh, value has dropped. They signed way too long of a deal. There was, but but traditionally, I, there might be mistakes in there, but I'm saying traditionally. That's exactly what a ground rights. So if you leave the conference, your rights are still owned by the conference and the media company still has your distribution rights. Nothing of that changes just by you saying you left the conference. That is why, well, that is why uh, I am not a believer and everybody I've talked to are not a believer in this where Florida State just declares I'm out of the conference and then everything follows in line it 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 won't they're gonna have to beat this in the court they're gonna have to reach a settlement either one of those two things well i don't think that this ever even comes to that but i i love these philosophical arguments because Mm -hmm. and debates because we've zeroed into the the pivot point this is it yeah when are they out when, when are they out of the contract? Because if 2036, by, well, if by exiting they are out of contract, the grant of rights does not apply. But if by exiting they're still under contract, yeah. then the grant of rights applies. Because yes. if they exit, if they exit and, and the AC and they're not under contract anymore, and the, and the ACC claims that they are, that's not going to stand up in court, it's not going to stand up in a Florida court. You're, you're not going to be obligated to a contract when you receive nothing in trade. It's not. It's against the law. You can't. It, it, I mean, it's against it, – contractually, that won't happen. I mean, and the courts will knock it down. So there's just a lot of things. Now, I don't, I don't think there is a – I don't think this is going to be the issue. I think the ACC loses – they win on most of their issues. They lose on three. I think there's three issues they're going to lose on. And, and and you don't want me to go into those because we'll be on the phone for two hours. But uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, I wanted to narrow down, and, and, and you and I have had some friendly debates and others, but it's just, no, FSU, we're, we're not crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. Our, 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 uh, our fan base, we have a better track record on most of what college football has in their realignment. Everything that our insiders have talked about, it's come true up to, up to this point. This idea that leaving the conference gets us out of the contract, it was presented as a belief, not an absolute, that this has mm. absolutely happened in this way. It was just a theory that people believe this to be the case. Yeah. And, and of course, they presented it in court, Clemson and Florida State both. So yeah. we'll see. But they, but I they, want. Yeah, go ahead. They, they, what, 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 what the frustrating, and I'll, we'll end the call here. The frustrating part is, is that Clemson and Florida State were unable because of this trade secrets from ESPN. They were unable to give us the specifics on what the language says, right? That makes sure. them believe that they're out of the ground of rights by exiting the conference. So hopefully. We all get to see it. We'll judge rules on it from somewhere, and we'll get, you know, that is the big uh, powder keg in this case. I agree with you on that. Well, what gave me, and I'm going to finish with this, what gave me a little buoy to my uh, my theories is Doug Ronhan and Danielle Kelly agreed with me, and then also another lawyer that doesn't agree with me on much of anything. <laughs> He tried to push back on this, yeah. and he had nothing. Yeah. Of course, I, I went into a lot more detail than when I am here on the phone. Yeah. But anyway, I, I appreciate um, it. Anyway, appreciate the phone but call. But we'll see. I'm, 
I'm not saying I'm right. If somebody proves me wrong, I'm wrong. I'll take the L. I, I, I ain't it. saying, but I'm saying I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Seminole. Mr. Seminole, uh, appreciate it. Good, sir. Have, have a good night. Thanks. You too. All right, <laughs> Gene Watson. I guarantee that Florida courts would show this to everyone. Um, wow, what a show. What a show. Way to, uh, a big, big way to start off April. I tell you that right now. Holy smokes. Um, Well, we've been on the air for over two hours, so I think we're going to close it down. Uh, we talked about the Bloomberg News report that says the ACC's weakness, the kink in its armor, is that it, it might lose home field advantage. And that could be that could be a major change. That could be a mover when it comes to possible settlement in this case between the ACC and Florida State. Um we also did a spotlight on the Miami Hurricanes, and I guess it went pear shape for one part of it. I thought Henry Parrish was going to be Miami's RB1, but 10 days ago, 12 days ago, I guess he said no mas. He left. He's going to possibly go back to Ole Miss and go to the portal on April 16th. But we talked about Cam Ward. The good wide receiver room, the experienced old line, Zach Carpenter, the transfer from Indiana Hoosiers, the center. He's gonna he's gonna be pretty good for Miami, so buckle up. The secondary is the weakness. Kiko, the great linebacker, good uh Reuben Bain, good defensive Ed Rusher, freshman all American consensus. Miami, if Cam Ward can bring down the turnovers just a bit in a in a and if they can get help in the secondary, maybe in the portal here on April 16th, Miami might be able to challenge for the ACC championship. Maybe, possibly. We'll see. They also need a running back since, since they're not going to have Henry Parrish, which I did not know about until the PATC corrected me once again. Anyways, uh, I thank you all for coming. Thank you for the generous donations to our channel, the great comments, and the great phone calls that we had today. Sometime this week, probably, we're going to get a decision, a ruling in Mecklenburg County. There could be other breaking news, so stick with us here. Subscribe. Get yourself notified of when we come on live because it could happen at any time. I appreciate all the generosity that you've given us. Um, until next time, and next time could be very, very soon from now, you all take great care of each other. Thank you so very much.